So there are different ways to do sound using the Kittenbot I.O. bit. They have a built-in speaker buzzer and they have a switch for whether you're going to use that or not. I have that switched on and turn my power supply on. You can see it going. I just coded a couple of things. So it's got some own little melodies, but it will also just play notes. Uh, you code in notes. The nice thing that they've added to this is they've got a little MP3 jack. So I've got a little speaker here, MP3. But you got to switch this to say that you are not using the built-in speaker. And plug in. Um, this little speaker is actually pretty loud. And my power turned off. That's the one thing I haven't figured out yet. How to keep my power on. Unfortunately, there's no volume control on that uh, speaker. So, take that for what you want. Or you can just add your own speakers. Um, I figured out that it was actually the first and the third um, part of the uh, what's called TRS switch power so just by having your own speakers and hooking up to there that might be nicer in the classroom with a bunch of kids doing sound that's a little softer um, for them you could even plug into pin zero and ground because that is the pin that defaults for sound. So I plug into zero signal and zero ground. I turn my power supply back on. And again, I hook up. The speaker only has two hookups. So it's not too hard to figure out what to hook it up to. But you notice it's a, it's a lot softer coming through. Coming through the pin zero itself. And I don't know why. There must be some boost of the signal going on with the uh, MP3 jack. So, or again, the MP3 is great for headphones too. So there's sound uh, using the IO bit. You could just power from the micro bit itself, you know, with, with, it, with its own little power pack that it comes with. Um, that works just fine also. Again, you don't need 5 volts until you get to servos and some sensors. But it's nice to have an on-off switch. So, there we go. There's some sound with the IO bit from KittenBot.